It's been a long time coming, but welcome to the Season 3 premiere of Andrew Reviews. I'm your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you are having a fantastic day. For this episode, I wanted to cover a particular game that I hold in high regard and consider to be an essential title to own for any gamer. And that game is the classic late 80s NES sports game, Super Dodgeball. <laughs> Before I get to the main event, I'll explain a little history as usual. Techno's Japan made a little arcade game called Neketsu Tough Guy Kunio, which was released in 1986 and even localized for the US market as Renegade. It was a game filled with delinquency and public violence, and it helped pioneer the beat em up genre. It also proved to be quite popular in Japan, so much so that Techno's decided to make Kunio the main character of a dodgeball arcade game they were developing and have it be centered around his high school's dodgeball club. And thus, Neketsu High School Dodgeball Club released to Japanese arcades in 1987, with Technos localizing it for the US market as Super Dodgeball. That same year, Technos started developing and publishing home console software, beginning with a Famicom version of Neketsu Tough Guy Kunio and a subsequent NES version of Renegade in 1988. This version improved upon some of the original arcade game's problems and even added extra content, making it superior. You don't usually see that. Technos would give Neketsu High School Dodgeball Club and Super Dodgeball the same Famicom slash NES treatment, with Super Dodgeball in particular being published in the United States by CSG Image Soft in 1989. One last thing before I start talking about the game itself. I must make it clear that I don't have the original NES cartridge for this game, but that's for a very good reason. It isn't actually the best way to play the game. I say this because of the amazing Double Dragon and Kunio Kun Retro Brawler Bundle, a fantastic collection featuring every single Famicom and NES title from the Neketsu series, and also the NES Double Dragon trilogy if you like that too. Perhaps the great thing about this collection is the fact that most of the games, including Super Dodgeball, have a quality up version that gets rid of all the sprite flicker and slowdown and provides additional fixes and improvements depending on the individual game. If you're unable to get this collection, the original version of Super Dodgeball is still tons of fun to play, but definitely get the collection whenever you get the chance. You can even play the game for free with the Nintendo Switch Online membership via the NES Online app. For this review, however, I won't be recording from the Retro Brawler bundle since I don't have an HDMI capturing device. But I do have access to the Wii Virtual Console release of this game, so I'll be using that for footage. Now without further ado, let's get started. Super Dodgeball consists of three game modes, World Mode, Versus Play, and Bean Ball. World Mode is the single player campaign of Super Dodgeball. In this mode, you play as Team USA and compete in the Dodgeball World Championships. You first faced off against six teams, the US All-Stars, England, India, Iceland, China, and Kenya in elimination rounds. You then must defeat Japan in the semifinals and the USSR in the finals. Once the USSR is defeated, evil clones of your team suddenly appear and you must defeat them in one final round in order to become the World Champion Dodgeball team. Before each round, you can decide the position of the six players on your team. Three players will be stationed on your side in the inner court, while the other three players will be stationed on the opposite side in the outer court. Each player on your team has different stats and attributes, so experimenting with different character lineups is key to success. The goal of each match is to knock out the three opponents in the inner court before the opposing team knocks out your three inner court players. The inner court players each have a life bar, and completing draining down a life bar will knock out its respective player. You control one player at a time, and whoever you control depends on who has the ball or which player is closest to the ball. The player you're currently controlling is indicated by a flashing 1 above them, and a 1 is also placed next to their name at the top of the screen. If a player moves past a boundary while they're holding the ball, they'll immediately drop it and move back. Whenever the player in your control has the ball, they can attack the opposing players, but they also have the option of passing the ball to any of their teammates in either the inner or outer courts. And that's pretty much it. Just beat the fuck out of dudes and don't get your ass kicked. Versus Play is pretty much the two-player version of World Mode, except you only play a single match. The cool thing about it is that you and the other player can choose to play as any of the nine teams in the game. Just like World Mode, you can decide the positions of the six players on your team, only now you have access to the other team lineups with all their own special stats and attributes. I wasn't able to get someone to demonstrate this mode with, but trust me when I say it's loads of fun, and I'm sure anyone who's ever played this with me can agree. 
Beanball mode is a free-for-all mode that can be played either by yourself or with another player. You choose a team, you choose a player, and then it's off to the races. No rules, no mercy, and your only boundaries are the edges of the yard. It's every man for himself, and only one will come out as the winner. Super Dodgeball's controls are fairly simple and work quite well. The A button is used for passing the ball and ducking. The B button is used for throwing the ball and catching it. Simultaneously pushing A and B makes you jump, but if you're playing in the Retro Brawler bundle, you can assign a separate button to be a simultaneous A and B press. You can even throw the ball or pass it after jumping. Pushing left or right twice will make your character run, Kirby style. And if you throw the ball while running, or after running then jumping, your character will unleash a power shot. Power shots are probably the biggest aspect that makes Super Dodgeball so fun. They're the most powerful attacks in the game and you'll be using them very often. There are different kinds of power shots and each character has one they can perform. My personal favorite is the one that can hit a player so hard that they literally wrap around the screen. It's almost as if they orbited around the planet before landing right back where they were. This is some wacky stuff. And speaking of wacky, I can't properly do this game justice without commenting on its epic sense of humor. Super Dodgeball was the first in the Neketsu series to utilize an over-the-top and cartoony style that remained for pretty much the rest of the series, with some exceptions here and there. From the insane power shots to the wacky facial expressions the characters make when they get hit, this game's nutty charm helps make the experience very enjoyable. Not to mention the fact that the game's overall visual design is quite well done. The different dodgeball courts from around the world are very distinct in their visual designs, with all their different assets clearly representing their respective countries and making them stand out amongst each other. But where Super Dodgeball does pretty well in the visual department, it absolutely excels with its fantastic soundtrack composed by Kazuo Sawa. If there's one thing about the Naketsu series that I adore, is its consistently awesome music, and Super Dodgeball is a prime example of this. A good number of the music tracks are actually rescored versions of music tracks from Neketsu Tough Guy Kunio, but I personally consider the version used in this game to be superior to the original versions. The original tracks used in this game are also very phenomenal, and easily some of the best music on the NES. Some notable examples include, but aren't limited to, the change position theme, the England theme, the Iceland theme, The Japan theme. The USSR theme. And the final showdown theme. Pretty much all the tracks in this game are of superb quality and have an excellent use of chords and harmonies synonymous with the Naketsu series. In short, Super Dodgeball kicks some major ass in the music department, and its songs are very much worth a listen whether or not you're playing the game. Overall thoughts? Super Dodgeball is super awesome. Enticing and explosive single player and multiplayer action combined with a cartoony style and sense of humor and all topped off with a phenomenal soundtrack makes Super Dodgeball easily one of the greatest games to grace the NES library and an essential title to play and acquire if you haven't done so already. And it's readily available, especially thanks to Double Dragon and Kunio-kun Retro Brawler Bundle, making it very well worth seeking out for your video game collection. So, Super Dodgeball for the NES gets an approval from me. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope to see you next time for the next review, or whatever new video I put out next. And, as always, thank you everybody for watching. I'm Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.